Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, let's go, if we will, to the second chapter of the book of Hebrews. You know, we're admonished of the Word of God to... Uh, constantly, constantly be in remembrance of the things we've learned. We're not supposed to let them slip. Now, if you're watching TV and you see me in a t-shirt, this is our love week. Hallelujah. All right. We, we had an outreach uh, the, all week this week, and so if you're watching it, that's why we're in t-shirts, because we're just kind of reinforcing what we did. All right. Hallelujah. And we're going to be doing more of this. Amen. And the reason we didn't put dates on the shirts is because we can use them again. We can have multiple love weeks. All right. That, that, that way we can have, you know, we just have a love fest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's right. Just once. We'll make, you know, we can use them over and over again. Hallelujah. But we're admonished to uh, be consistent in remembering the things we've learned. Your faith is going to be challenged. It's going to be fat challenged on every facet, every opportunity. The devil's going to challenge it. So it's imperative that you maintain and actively maintain the spirit of faith. You have to guard your faith. Did you know that? you got to guard it, you got to watch over it, you got to maintain it, praise God. Hebrews 2.11, 2, I'm sorry, Hebrews 2.1 says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Now, the word slip comes from a Greek word, and that Greek word means to carelessly pass. Or, you know, carelessly let it just pass. We don't want to let the things we've learned carelessly pass. Well, I heard that faith stuff before, and I ran around with them faith people for a little while, but, you know, there's more to the Bible than faith. Did we ever say it wasn't? Now, I've been accused of saying that we're the only ones. I've never said we're the only ones. All right? All right? I mean, I've got, I've got um, non-Holy Ghost brothers, pastors, that I love and appreciate. They, they, they love Jesus, they, and they do so much for the kingdom, and I appreciate what they do. We've never said we're the only ones. Now, that we see things differently in some areas than they do. They baptize the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. But you know what? They're getting people saved. They're, they're teaching people how to live right and live godly. As a matter of fact, I, I know some people who aren't Pentecostal or Word of Faith who are teaching people to live more godly than some of us, our Word of Faith people are. You know? So um, uh, I got one, one pastor in town. His son was a good friend of my son's in school and a wonderful man. Okay? Love God. And their church is doing good things. And, and I've seen some of his blogs. He's more, he's more about living holy than we are right now. And we're supposed to be holy people. Holiness people. You know? We, 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 we don't let things slip. Just because, you know, we get tired of doing it. Amen. You can't get tired of doing the right things. The Bible says to be not be weary in well-doing. Amen? We're, we're, stay, we're to maintain our well-doing. Can you say amen? amen. All right. Uh, Second Peter. Chapter 1, verse 12 and 13 says, Wherefore, I would not be negligent. This is what, now, what is Peter not going to be negligent in? To put you in remembrance, always to put you in remembrance of these things. Though you know them, and be established in the present truth, yea, I think it meet. Now, the word meet is old King Jimmy for necessary or proper, expedient. Okay? That's old King Jimmy meaning around 1611, they used the word meet. We don't use that like that anymore. If we meet, it's dinner. Amen? Or it's a track meet. All right? But if we know, here it meant necess necessary or proper or expedient. So I think it's expedient or proper or necessary. Um, that as long as I'm in this tabernacle, Peter says, as long as I'm in my, in my body, I think it's necessary to stir you up by putting you in, rem in remembrance. And he just got, do, got, do, just got through saying, you know them, you're established in them, but I'm going to keep telling you. Well, we've heard all that before, and we need to hear something new. Go ahead, hee-haw. Sing some gloom, despair, and agony, because that's where you're going to be if you don't keep stirred up and you don't maintain. Amen? Now, I, I, I used to be a computer programmer. Well, I guess I still am, because I still write stuff for the church and do stuff for the church. Uh, but by my trade, as it were, uh, before ministry, was a, a computer programmer. And... Uh, I worked at an old farm implement company down in Tarboro, North Carolina, called Long Manufacturing. They made tractors and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> we, they, they were old school computers. They had the big old room with the floors, with all the cables under the floors. And they had the, uh, 
uh, and, and they had the sequential tape drives all the way down the wall and all that. And you know what sequential tape drive is? It, the tape would just sit there and turn back and forth like this. They had a bank of them, you know, uh, it's, because that's how they stored data. And, you know, sequential because it was an order. You had to, you know, it wasn't like a CD. They couldn't run over there and grab something over here. All right, and actually, it was so old. It was an IBM Model 360, uh, uh, IBM 360 Mod 40. They still had hexadecimal dials on the side. You could dial your programs in in hexadecimal and punch them in one line at the time. Wow. I'm an old programmer. I'm way back. Hallelujah. I used to, I, I started programming on cards, not floppies, cards. You know, blending those those days. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, the reason, unfortunately, because if you walk into the computer with your cards and somebody tripped you and you fell and dumped them all on the floor, you had a mess. <laughs> you had to get them all back in order. Praise God. But, uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, maintenance. I, was, I, I knew I was going to say something. Well, we would be sitting in there working all of a sudden. They say, okay, everybody off the computers, off your, off your stuff, everything. You know, why? IBM's coming in. What's wrong? Nothing. Why are they coming in? They're doing maintenance. They'd come in periodically. Nothing was wrong with the computers. Nothing was going wrong. They weren't having any problems. They'd come in there and dump the core. We call it the core dump. It came out in hex. You could, you know, pages of, of stuff in hexadecimal. And uh, they, they knew how to read it. They could, you could, you could, every so many characters made up a, 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 a word or a letter or something. They could read it. They would go in there and just what they called maintenance. They'd just try to fix stuff before it tore up. Right. They would look for things that maybe were going wrong that nobody knew about. And they did what they called maintenance. They, they, they were the maintenance engineers, the field engineers. They would come in and do maintenance on the computer before it tore up so it wouldn't tear up. Okay? And uh, so you had, to, you had to let them have two, three, four hours, whatever it took them that day to do their maintenance. And that was a real periodical thing. Every four to six weeks or so, they'd show up. And you just had to stop everything because the guys with the briefcases and the three-piece suits and the glasses came in. Okay? The IBM guys. That's, that was their image back then. You know, three-piece suits, glasses, and a briefcase. And they were doing maintenance programming. They were taking care of stuff to make sure that it stayed running right. We see, we can't stop doing our faith wrong or that, that way. We have to maintain it. We have to keep a check on it and keep a watch on it with the word of God and make, keep it adjusted and keep it on track. And Peter said, you may know them, you are establishing this present truth, but I think that as long as I'm in this body, it's necessary for me to continue to remind you of these things. In other words, I'm IBM field engineer. I'm coming in and I'm doing maintenance on your spiritual walk Amen. to make sure that you don't get off track. Because it doesn't take long to get off track. And when you get off track a little bit, it doesn't take long to get you further off track. And if you get off track there a little bit, you can get off track a little bit more. All right? And uh, so we, we want to make sure we're maintaining our faith walk, our, our spirit of faith, maintaining how we live, maintaining the Word of God. Peter says, I think it's necessary. And how long, Peter? Until I, until I die. Because we said, as long as I'm in this tabernacle. As long as I'm living, I'm going to be doing this. Now, see, people come along and go, well, you've preached that before. We don't need to hear it again. Or, you know, uh, you, you've told us that before. I'm tired of hearing. I want to hear something else. But Peter said, I'm going to keep stirring you up. How long are you going to do it, Peter? Because I've heard the, about the 25th time too many until I die. You're going to hear it, and I'm going to keep stirring you up. Amen. So, we, you know, in maintaining, you know, we grow to places, and I know many, many Christians who have grown to places in the Lord, and then because of whatever, whatever's going on in their life, because of decisions they make, because they've listened to certain people say certain things, um, maybe somebody told them, you know, you faith people, you know, you think you know everything, and then they, that little bug gets in their ear, and I've had them come to me and say, you know, well, Pastor Ed, you, you know, we just think, we act like we know everything. No, we don't. That's just a lie of the devil. I said, that's just a lie of the devil. But I can tell you what we know, we know. I can go right now to a Baptist preacher, and he knows about Jesus being salvation, and he will preach Jesus is the way you get saved, and he knows that he knows that. Now, he, I know he knows that. He doesn't know everything. I'll guarantee you, if you ask him, do you know everything? No, I don't know everything. But what I do know, I know. And I know Jesus is the Savior. And you'll never get in the back off of that. What we know about faith and about the, the Holy Ghost and the move of the Spirit, we know that. We're not going to back off it. We don't think we know everything. Amen. That's just a little, that is a, that's a seed sent by the devil to deceive you and to take you out of what God has. Amen. You know, get you to be, you know, open to everything. And you get open to everything and you'll take anything. That's right. Amen. We're to put a watch over our heart. We're to guard our heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. And so Peter comes along and says, look, <coughs> I'm not going to be negligent. 
Now think about that. He considered not keeping them stirred up in the things that they were establishing and knew negligence on his part. Well, you go tell Peter off, okay? All right. Amen. Second Peter 3. A couple chapters over. Uh, 1 and 2. This second epistle, beloved, I now write to you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye be mindful of the words which were spoken by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. I like this because Peter says, he's telling that the commandments of the, of, of, the, of the what? Of the holy prophets. He's talking about the Old Testament. These people who say we don't need the Old Testament, that's old news. We're under the new covenant. Oh, glory be to God. We've been set free from everything that the Old Testament said. No, you haven't. I said, no, you haven't. Did you know adultery is still adultery under the New Testament? Because it was adultery before the, the law was given. It was, it was God's moral code is God's moral code. Sin is still sin. So, but then Peter equates what the prophet, the apostles wrote and said with scripture. And so, and, and we, you know, one place he talks about Paul's writings. He says, you know, our beloved brother Paul writes things that are hard to be understood, which those that are unlearned do rest as they do the other scriptures. He equated Paul's writing with scripture. All right. And so he says here, look, um, we're going to be mindful to bring you to remembrance of what? The words that were spoken by the holy prophets and us, the apostles, the commands of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If we're going to have strong faith, we're going to have to stay stirred up. We're going to have to stay in remembrance of the thing. You, what you learned. Now remember Hebrews 2.1 says, be careful that you let them slip. Carelessly pass away from you. Well, I, I, I want to hear about the love of God. If you're studying the Bible and you're studying faith, you're going to have to study love. But I mean Bible love and not crazy love. Not sloppy agape. Here we've got our love shirts on. Hallelujah. Not, not lying love. You know? What, see, some people think that love is, is just not doing what the Bible says. That's not love. I was, I was in Winston's when we, we were talking on the same message, but it's going to come out different. It always does. And we started it last week over there. We didn't start it here. We, got it, we started it last week over there. And, um, but, um, you know, People come, have somebody come to church one time a number of years ago and say, we don't believe in spanking. Well, I said, well, you know, now I'm going to tell you. I told them up front. Well, you know, when it comes to teaching on family stuff, I'm going to teach spanking because I believe in spanking. As long as you're okay with that because I'm going to teach it. Okay. Hello? Why do you teach spanking? Because I don't care what Dr. Benjamin Spock, not the pointy-eared Spock, but the other Spock. The pediatrician who wrote his book on child rearing and, and, and all the hippies thought it was the greatest thing since peanut butter and sliced bread. He said, don't, don't, don't spank your child because if you hit your child, you'll teach them to hit. No, you'll teach them that they can't get away with that. Amen. And you wonder why people get up and go to prison because they never got spanked. I got spanked. I'm not crippled. I'm not lunatic. I'm not going around shooting people. Hello. We got a generation of not spanking. We got all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Why do you teach that? Because the Bible, you know, how many remember the saying? What's the saying? Spoil the rod, I mean, spare the rod and spoil the child. That's not Bible. You know what the Bible says? Does anybody know what the Bible says? Just raise your hand if you do. Cap, Jeff, the Bible says he who spares the rod hates his child. You are exactly right. Nathan goes, I heard that verse up many a time when I was getting my back in wore out. It's because we love you. Now, I, I, never, I never spanked my child and enjoyed it. It was never pleasurable. It was necessary to teach them and train them and, and bring them to where they needed to be. It was not because it was, and then go, praise God, he messed up the down. I'm going to get to beat him today. <clears throat> no, you spare the rod, you hate your child. Why? Because you're not teaching them, you're not training them properly. So, and I said that because somebody told me they don't believe in it, and I, I said, well, fine, but I'm going to teach it. 
That's just what I'm going to teach it, uh, you know. And when I get there, I, you know, I don't really care if you think it's pointed at you or not. I'm teaching it because that's what the Bible says. Hello? You know, they stay. So praise the Lord for, for you know, until they, 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 they move to another city later. But they stay, you know, because I'm not going to back off. The Word, I think it's necessary to put you in remembrance of what the Word says. Amen? Well, see, some people don't like things. They, they don't like things said. You know, they, they get to a point, well, you know, my buddies are all, you know, they don't believe in the Holy Ghost. They don't believe in faith. But, you know, uh, they're not even saved. But I'm going to go hang out. You don't need to hang out. Listen, you can go minister to people, but you don't need to go on vacation with, with people who don't believe anything. That's not, what, that's not what we're called to do. We're called to minister life. Amen? And you, and you, and you, you need to stay with your own company. You need to run with the crowd that believes what the Bible says, what you, you, you believe, or it will drain you. I know, I know people you know, that, that uh, I've talked to, didn't go to our church. You wouldn't know them if they walked in the room right now. And I told you, that's, that's the person I told this about. You wouldn't know who they are. But they, they told me that they, you know, they, they had gone and worked at, at a major charismatic university. And they loved to follow the teachers of Dad Hagen. And they were going to a church that didn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because they were going to help the people over there. They weren't helping anybody. And in the end, it cost them dearly. And we're going to tell you what happened. But it cost them dearly because they didn't believe. See, you get to hanging around people and, 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 uh, and people, you know, well, I just won't go into any, any more detail, but I'm telling you, it cost them. And it cost them. And then the people that the, they were spending time with didn't believe any of the things that they said they loved. It'll drain you. I said, it'll drain you. If, you, if you're the giver out all the time, see, if you're always the one that's giving out, that's why Jesus had to go withdraw and fill himself back up because he was always giving out. I said he was always giving out. Amen? But you get to hanging around the wrong people. What do I mean wrong people? People who don't believe what you, what you know is right. It'll drain you. It'll pull out of you. It'll drain you of your faith. In a disguising way, you'll think you're doing all right. Do you, anybody know the story of Samson? Does anybody know why the story of Samson is in the Bible? Oh, it's a good movie. But what's the reason you don't go after the harlot? What's the whole story? Hanging around the wrong people. Remember, he came to his mother and father and wanted them. Now, what's this got to do with maintaining the spirit of faith? You got to be around the right people all the time. It's, you got to be around, what, the Bible says when they got persecuted and they got beat and all those different things, they went to their own company. Amen. What did they go to their own company for? To get charged back up so they could go back out and minister again. See, they got beat and all that stuff, not because they were out at the bar hanging with people trying to be, a, you know, show them that Christians could be cool. They were out ministering. And when they got in trouble and, and things started happening bad to them, they went back to their own company. All, look, read the book of Acts over and over again. They went to their own company. And they got together and prayed. And they, what, they prayed in harmony. Why? Because they believed the same thing. And they got charged back up and went back out. They even said, Now, Lord, stretch forth thine hand to heal. In the name of thy holy church, grant unto thy servants all boldness, that we may, that we may uh, uh, grant unto thy servants boldness, that we may speak in the name of thy holy child Jesus, by stretching forth thine hand to heal. See, they, they got back together, got to pray, and got stirred back up, got charged back up, and ready to run back out. Amen. So they could go do what the God had for them to do. But you've got to get to hanging around the wrong people. Samson's the story of what happens when you hang around the wrong. He went to his mom and dad and said, I want, a, I, want that, I want that woman from down there. They said, no, you need to bury people, someone from your, own, from your own people. Now, this is not a racist thing. This was about being under the same belief system. Okay? They weren't racist. It wasn't they didn't want him hanging around with her because she was a different race. She, well, she was, she was not under the covenant. She was, for all practical intents and purposes, a little harlot. Maybe, or what's, what's, what's the proper term now? Ratchet. <laughs> okay, she was ratchet. All right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of y'all know what ratchet is. That, that's, that's just, you know, nasty. The, I just had to beat the browns just go through my head right then. Freckle face, nasty. Anyway, I fell out of the bed. First time I saw it, somebody in church said, you need to see Meet the Browns. I, I got it on Netflix or something, was watching it up on the TV in my bedroom, and I fell in the floor laughing so hard. 
when they got to that scene, your, your, your daddy was a, my daddy wasn't a rolling stone. Your daddy was a pimp. All right. <laughs> when he got that first, started naming off all the women, she was a freckle face, this, and, you know, and got, she was a nasty. Anyway, anyway. Well, you know, um, but Delilah was not delightful. She represents, she represents being connected to that which drains you of your anointing. And Samson would go to her, and he told his mom and dad, I want her for a wife. And they said, no, we don't need to do that. You know, but they, he, he just kept demanding it. Kept demanding it. I don't see anything wrong with it, you know. See, listen, 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 people. Stop trying to figure stuff out and go, well, I don't see anything wrong with it. When we got ministers with decades of experience telling you, you don't need to be hanging with people who, who are detrimental to your faith walk, your love walk, your, 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 your walk with the Lord. And it's not always unsafe people. It can be people who just don't believe like you. I've seen a many a person who's girls go marry some guy who didn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They're, they're, they're in a church that's, that's Pentecostal or charismatic. And the and next thing you know, they don't believe it anymore because they, they got hooked up with this guy. He, he told them, you ain't going over there no more. Yeah, be not unequally yoked. That can mean in relationships with people who don't believe like you believe. Well, Samson was unequally yoked. And she kept saying, you know, if you love me, you'll tell me your strength. He would tell her, he'd lie. He, he got the lying. He told her a bunch of lies. And they'd come in there, and he'd jump up and kill them all or beat them all up. And one day, she just put the, put the squeeze on him. He, he why? Because he'd been drained a little bit at the time, a little bit at the time, a little bit at the time, over to this point where she said, if you, if you don't love me. If you love me, you tell me. He told her. And when he fell asleep, she got him drunk, fell asleep, she cut all his hair off. See, he thought she loved him. She was an emissary of the enemy. To drain him of his anointing. And you see, Satan will set you up with little stuff. You, you think you know everything over there at Faith and Victory Church. You need to open up your, your horizons. You need to fellowship with these people who, who, who believe they can do anything they want to and not, and not get penalized for it. And uh, praise God. And doing all kinds of stuff you don't believe. And so a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. Next thing you know, you're believing the same stuff you would have never said before. What? Satan sent somebody to steal your anointing. Satan sent somebody to drain you of your calling. Satan sent somebody to drain you of your faith, to get you out of what God has for you to do. It's an emissary of the devil. Well, there are Christians. They can still be sent by the devil. We won't go into why Nathan's saying that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> they can be emissaries of the devil. And they're after, see, I, I think I said this last week or in the past week. Satan is after your faith. He's after your faith. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. See, faith can move mountains. Faith can do all kinds of things. You need your love walk. I expect you to walk in love. God expects you to walk in love. But Satan's, honestly, Satan's not really after your love walk as much as he's after your faith walk. And if he's after your love walk, it's a, it's a short circuit of faith. Because your faith is dangerous to his kingdom. He's out to get it. When the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith? He didn't say find love. I'm, don't take me wrong. Do not go out of here and start. He don't believe in love. Just, 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 if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if that's your mindset and you're looking for something, turn, off, turn me off. And don't write me a letter or send me an email. All right? Because that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is Satan's after your faith because faith is detrimental to his kingdom. Your lack of love is detrimental to you, but your lack of faith is detrimental. To, I mean, your, your, your amount of faith is detrimental to his kingdom. When the son, Jesus said, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? Okay? Luke 18, 8. There you go, right there. Will he find faith on the earth? Didn't say will he find love, will he find faith. So we have to maintain our faith, make it powerful, make it useful. Amen? Amen. Isn't that right? And so um, we, have to be, we have to watch who we are around. Okay? Uh, I, I kind of jumped my points here. Proverbs 7, 17 says, So iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of a friend. What is sharpening the people? You don't need somebody being a rock dulling your blade. 
Amen? Under the guise of, we, 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 I'm going to love on them. Well, you can love on them, but you don't need to get, get destroyed in the process. I see, you know, listen, there is, there is nothing open about rejecting the word of God to be accepted by another person. That's not openness. That's stupidity. And I'm not saying that'd be mean. You are not to be in a place where you're becoming deficient in an effort to show that you're open to other people's opinions or ideas. No, I will not compromise the word of God. You cannot afford to compromise the word of God. You have a duty to stay diligent to the word of God. And let the word of God continue to teach you and to establish you and you walk in the light of the, of, of the whole counsel of the word of God. It doesn't, doesn't mean we, don't, we can't work with other people. It doesn't mean we can't you know, do things together in the kingdom just because you don't see eye to eye on everything. But I am telling you, your fellowship time and who you spend all your time with and, and hang with, Hello? Can, can make or break you in the long run. Well, I don't know about that healing business. And they start telling you everybody they know that didn't get healed. Well, I know people didn't get healed. But it doesn't change the fact God Jesus is the healer. Amen. And that you can receive health and healing from the Lord by faith. Somebody say glory. glory. I'm not going to hang around people who sit around and tell me they don't believe in it. I'm not going to hang around people who are contrary to the word of God and hold some doctrine. Now, I'll minister to them, and I will not reject them. I'll love them, but I'm not going to go out there and spend all my time with them. Well, you're near my Nope. I'm not going to let somebody undermine my faith. Amen. It doesn't mean I won't ever do anything. You understand what I'm saying? They're not going to be my buddy. Amen. I'm not going to spend all my time with them listening to them talk about their stupid stuff. Yeah. You know? You start talking about I believe in healing. They start telling you, I don't believe that mess. It's, you know, you, I'm going to win them to the Lord. You know, and then you don't go back, you know, or you leave, you leave and go somewhere and start going to a church that doesn't believe anything like that. Wow. Yeah. See people do it. Yeah. I've, seen, I mean, I've seen them go and, you know, and, and, and get hooked up and think in places that don't believe anything. Right. I, I know, uh, 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 I grew up in a certain Pentecostal denomination. I know one, one pastor, him and his wife, uh, you know, sometimes we just do stupid stuff in our denominations. We, we put people in ministry who aren't ready because they graduate from our Bible school. You may not be ready. You just might not be ready. And you need to go get established so you can be ready. They got put into a pastor. You know, they, got, they graduated. They got, you know, of course, in, in, in denominations, they vote you in and out. And he was a young pastor, and they voted him in to a church that was a church split. That's why we got the young pastor, probably. Because we were split from the other, one of the other churches in town in that denomination. And, and come to find out later, him and, him and his wife fought like cats and dogs. They ended up divorced. And then later, um, saw her years later, she had married somebody who wasn't even Pentecostal. She, not, I mean, she, she, was, she had gone to the Bible school, was baptized in the Holy Ghost. I mean, spoke in tongues. Flowed that thing, that, 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 that vein, not thing, but vein. But because of divorce and stuff, she went and found her somebody didn't even believe any of that. And, and, and then later on was just a, you know, a pastor. I don't know if they were a pastor, but they, she was in a church that didn't believe any, anything like that. You know how repressed you get spiritually when you're in places you don't, that don't believe what you believe? Or you try to justify, well, I, I, I don't believe that anymore. And really down on the inside, you know it's true because you, you lived it, you experienced it, you know it. It, it, it's, it's harmful to us. So we should be iron sharpening iron. Amen. Amen. We don't need to be, you know, going out and doing something. Now, this is part of maintaining your faith. You can't start hanging around people who don't believe the Bible. Right. We mean they don't believe the Bible. They don't believe that Jesus does, you know, there's areas they don't believe. They don't believe that Jesus is the healer. That all passed away the day the last apostle died. Please give me scripture. Amen. Honestly, just give me scripture. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13 will not work when that which is perfect has come that you just cannot make that fit that, that mantra. Okay? Those kind of nostalgia of the scriptures that I was talking about. That is so bogus. And you just told yourself that to convince yourself you're okay. Okay? But you can't start hanging around and spending time with people like that and expect to maintain strong faith. Say, Ouch. 
But people will do all kinds of stuff, you know, for, for crazy reasons. And sometimes I don't understand the reasons. I look at them, I, I just look at people sometimes and wonder, what are you thinking? Why would you do that? You know? And, you know, they don't have a good answer usually. Okay. So stay around people of like precious faith. And then, I'll tell you what. Um, come back tonight. All right? I'm going to finish this up tonight. I don't have anybody scheduled. I'm not, I'm not going to put anybody on the spot for tonight uh, to do something in, in three hours. Um, but next week is prayer, healing, prayer, prayer communion, communion and healing rally. And the, the following week we'll have a guest internal house minister on the uh, 11th, the night of the 11th. But I'm going I'm to finish this up tonight. So come back out tonight. We'll finish this up. And the next couple points are one of them is remain teachable. Uh, and then that finishes up teaching us, and we'll teach on how to maintain your spirit of faith, okay? But kinda, I kind of jumped into not being around, the, not, not hanging out with the wrong people. Now, listen, again, wrong people are not always sinners. It's, it's, but for a lot of people, it's not sinners. It's disgruntled people. It's people who accuse you of being, thinking you're better than everybody else because you think you know everything. And if you search it out, sometimes they got hurt by somebody or whatever, and they're all grumpy, you know. And they're not walking alone. God loves people. I love people, you know. Some people accuse me of not loving people, but I love people. They tell me I don't love people because I try to tell them the truth, and they don't like it. Amen. I'll get told that, you know. You don't walk in love. Well, why? Because why? You, you talk about this. Yeah. Because you've got a bunch of people that are making money telling everybody it's okay. I will not, you know, that's a, you know, you can look around and go, man, pastor, you can shut the doors today. We could, you know. I mean, we, we, we're on month to month. I could just shut the doors and sell everything off and finish up and call bankruptcy. But I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to do, I am not going to change or compromise the word to get people to like what I say so they'll come here. Amen. Amen. Or avoid things. To get them to come here. My jo- you, know, you know what my job is? This is not, you know, the church is not the soul saving station. The church is the discipleship station so that you can go out and get people saved. And bring them in to do what? Get discipled. So the church is where we disciple people. That's, that's our main calling is to disciple the saints. That's to teach you the truth, to t- teach you to w- watch out for error. To do th- there's things we teach you that, that people don't want to hear because they, they want to live in error. And I'm not going to let you live in error. Okay? And you're just not going to live in error and not hear about it. Now, you might do it, but you'll know it's wrong. And then we're going to teach you how to get out of that and how to live victoriously. Amen. We want to teach people how to, we do want to teach people how to live victoriously. But we're not going to do it under the guise of telling them what they're doing is okay Amen. if it's not. And that is love. When, I, when we were beating Nathan, yeah, I just use old Eastern Carolina term. We beat him. Beat my younger. They hated for us to go to the paint store. Them five-gallon paint stirrers. They're three times as thick as the one little one-gallon ones. And they're longer. You can get some, you can get some, you know, it's kind of like a phylum. You get some, you know, leverage on that thing. And pow! And they don't break. They don't break. If I, just go to the paint store and ask for five-gallon paint stirrers. Five-gallon paint stirrers. About that long, they're thicker. That one man said one time, he said, put something on you that Jesus can't take off. <laughs> but I, my youngins hated for me to go to that paint store. We, and the only place, one time, the only place we could find them was across there on Summit Avenue at a paint store. We would drive all the way from where we lived to Summit Avenue to get them. Kids had to ride in the car knowing we were going to go get the paint store. No, no paint, just come in there. Get the paint stir. No, no, it's not. Oh, give me a break. (laughs) 
Faith without works is dead being alone. And my works for us will wear your back end out. We, we, loved, we, loved, we loved our children. They were disciplined because we loved them, not because we hated them. They were disciplined to keep them from going down the path of destruction because we loved them. They're not perfect, but we love them, and you know, we disciplined them. We had to do what we had to do to, to keep them from going down certain paths. Amen? So we teach the Word of God. We teach discipline in the Word of God. We teach victory in the Word of God. We teach you how to live victorious. We also teach you you can't do this and, and, and be victorious. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.